Hello my friends, this is Gladys from Gladys Garden and we'll begin with our tutorial for my carnival lamp um, and you're, I'm going to tell you the things that you're going to need. You're going to need to buy one of this uh, disc, styrofoam disc that measures approximately 12 by I think it's 7 8 of an inch wide or close to an inch, something like that. And um, any craft store, I'm sure, will, uh, you know, major craft store will carry something like this. I know I bought this one at Walmart. And so, if they would have something a little smaller, I'd probably go for that one. But, you know, they didn't have this, and this can work just fine. So, the other thing you're going to need is uh, the modeling cream. And I used this for two reasons. Once I didn't have enough acrylic uh, gold paint, but the other one is the fact that this will mold into a hard sur uh, surface. And the style from being porous, um, I did want it a little bit more refinement at the end, so that's the reason why I painted it in, gl in uh, gold. So you're going to need um, two discs that would measure that, um, you know, about 12. I think it's uh, 11 and 7 eighths that I cut this one's all around and that is to put it right here and also to oops upside down and now it's just to cover front uh, top and bottom uh, for this precise uh, project and the other thing you're going to be needing as you can tell I have two perforated areas right here not perfect it doesn't really matter for that you're going to need to buy one of these and I know this may uh, sound or look odd but this will work really well for it. What this is going to do, you're going to put this big one is going to be right in the middle and then the other one is going to go here and then you're going to bring all the way down. So once you apply your paper to this, you have to make a slit in here in order you know, to go through uh, with paper and, um, and all. But for right now, those are the things you're going to need. Um, let's see what other things you're going to need. Obviously, the you know the I'm going to be using the whole uh, paper from uh, Ephemera's Vintage Garden, which is the Garden Carnival um, printable journal kit, and. Um, yeah, so that's the one. So you can either buy it or use whatever you other papers you may have. But I think for the theme that we're going to be creating, this paper that she has is uh, fabulous. The other things you're going to be uh, needing, it's some um, um, skewers. Now they do have two sizes. Let me try to see if I can get the other one. They have two sizes on the stores. They have one that is really thin and the other one that is not quite, quite as thin, but it's still thin than the dowels that you can buy in craft stores. And they're much cheaper when you buy them as skewers, much, much cheaper. So um, I'm going to use the one that is not quite as thin, although you can get away with this, but I seem to, you know, like this other one. So buy yourself a whole package of those. And um, because I exactly, I don't know how many we'll be using later on, but I know we're going to be um, needing some of them. And that's it for right now. I am going to keep on um, with my project. So up to now, we have created. And when I say this is going to be a lamp, I guess, you know, you've seen the video uh, with the pictures and all. Uh, I'm going to be using, obviously, uh, Tim Holt's little lantern that he has. And I'll show you what it looks like once you have put your batteries. It, it requires two AA batteries. And this is a Tim Holtz. So there it is. Okay. You can see it lit up right there. Well, maybe I'll turn this light off so you can see it. Now you can you can see it much better now. And let me see if I'll turn this other one. And we'll, we'll be able to oops, catch it a lot better. So there you go. There's your little lamp right there. So that's the one we're going to be using. This lamp is for my kids' um, room. My two boys, actually. And let me turn my light back on. 
So I, I've always wanted to do a circus uh, type of theme, you know, a craft project for my kids' room, for my boys' room. But I don't like clowns. I'm not a clown person at all. I Actually, they kind of scare me. Um, don't like them whatsoever. So I've kind of stayed away. And I love Debbie's paper because I think she only has like one or two clowns in it. And I kind of, kind of steer away from it myself. But that's just personal, you know. Um, but I'm going to continue more of the, you know, like the theme of the name of her paper is this carnival. So in a carnival, you got, you know, all kinds of things. So basically that's, uh, you know, the story behind this. Alright, so what we're going to do is going to apply, I'm just going to apply any old glue. I'm using clear glue. Um, this, this is uh, Beacon's glue. And you can find it at any craft store and I believe Walmart too. But I'm sure you have some um, clear glue at home. And this is so thick that it takes a while for it to come, you know, out of the bottle. But that's all I'm using. I would rather use hot glue, but I cannot because it's been styrofoam will go right through it. It'll start melting it, and obviously that's not what we want. So what I'm going to do, instead of applying it, I almost did, instead of applying it to the styrofoam, I am going to apply it to the... Um, the actual paper that I already cut out and this is just regular star, uh, card stock that I got at my local craft store and you know it's kind of a mustardy yellowish vintage color and I cut it I just you know made a an impression of this into the paper or I drew it I traced it that's basically what I'm trying to say but it's not coming out properly and um, then just cut it out and you're going to need two of those, obviously, for top and bottom. So, let's bring this back. And the gold um, modeling, clay, modeling um, cream is still a little wet, but it doesn't really matter. It'll dry eventually. All right, so there it is. There's the first one. Now I'm going to turn it around. And we're going to apply the other for the other one and then we're going to make find our holes and you know make a slit into the paper carefully so it doesn't completely rip apart I'm trying to put it all in the edges here but this glue is so thick let me tell you they say it's good I, I'm, I'm not really fond of it um, don't need, I think I bought it when I was doing some sort of work and I needed something really fast and that's all they had in my craft store at the moment and I'm much more partial to the um, scotch um, what is, I think it's fast drying that's what it's called something like that alright that's good enough with glue let me put my lid back on and so now I'm gonna put this and put this right on top and then once it goes down it just wants to stay in the place so just before it gets too dry try to you know give it um, a movement until it gets to the place that you want it to have and then we're going to put I'm gonna put some tape around here but I wanted those edges to be gold also um, so that's the reason why I use the modeling clay again I didn't have enough of the I didn't have enough of my acrylic uh, gold paint but then I wanted the you know the the texture part of it to kind of fill in this areas because you know being styrofoam is really porous so it takes a lot of uh, a lot of stuff all right so let me go get my tape and we'll restart in a little bit all right my friends let's go on with our second face to this uh, project and I've already you know you see me how I covered both areas and then on the back this is the place it's going to be down in the um, on top of this so you're never going to see it so from here I just kind of ripped it with my with my finger like this then once I have it ripped it um, with my fingers I went through here with a knife and it cut let me show you right through it it's, you can see the, the knife right there. I don't know if you see the movement because it's a short knife. But anyway, so you'll you'll do the same thing for both um, for both um, openings right there. 
and then I went ahead and used some washi tape on the edges. Um, I like it so far, don't know if I'm going to keep it um, or if I put another one, I'm not sure, but so far I like it. So just, I don't know which brand is this. Um, it could be Tim Holtz or it could be Seven Gypsies, I'm not even sure. Anyhow, so here we are up to here now. Anyhow, so here we are up to here now. So the next step, truly, it is to put it through the hole. And when you put them through this one's right here, just make sure, be careful that the paper doesn't rip more than one issue. It should, because I didn't close it, didn't open it, I think, all the way down there. So just try your best to be careful there. So it's still going to, you know, kind of look like that. Don't worry about it. We can fix that with a little bit of paint and all that good stuff. And we can push this paper down too. All right, so it should look like this by now. Okay, so that's the way it's going to stay. The other uh, good part about this is it's very sturdy, obviously, and that's one of the reasons why I thought that this would make the best uh, choice. And um, we are, I am going to glue it down, down here, but I'm not, not so sure yet completely about it. So we'll leave it for now. The next thing you're going to need is one of these. It's um, kitchen towel paper roller or not the roller but uh, well I guess it's a tube where the you know um, paper towels are rolled into. I also printed one of the papers by Ephemeris Vintage Garden from the um, Garden Carnival um, collection and this is what I'm going to use to wrap this up. So what I'm going to do again we're going to use our glue and I should have left it upside down because this thinks this takes forever to go down and I'm just going to go around it. I'm not even going to cut it or anything like that. I'm just going to circle it around. Let's see if I can hurry up this glue to, to come or not. I don't even know. It is just tremendously thick, you know. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add glue to this whole paper, the back of it. Especially the edges, of course. And we're going to be distressing pretty soon. All this papers and good stuff. Okay, so that's that's good enough right there. And I'm going to use this to keep my to keep my glue from you know going backwards. All right. Um, this over here. And I want to see. I want to. I want to keep these two faces up. So I'm going to start with the writing right there and then I'm just going to roll basically. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so just kind of hold it in place until, you know, it's completely dry. All right, so we'll let, we'll let that dry for a little bit. And I'm going to get a little bit of uh, um, some distressing going on into my page. Let me grab my, I'm going to use my Stace On. And this is my Saddle Brown. And this is my beat up one. If you watch a lot of my videos, you'll see that I have two pads. One that is pretty beat up, but that's the way I like it. So so it distresses very well. Because I don't keep a lot of ink on this one, I just ink it when I need it. And this is just to ink up the edges, just to give them that, you know, um, vintage look. I'm gonna do the same on the bottom, although nobody's really going to see that but me. But you know, what the heck, we're here. Let's give it a good, well, as much distressing as, as you would like to have on. Um, let's just put it that way. I just want it a little bit dirty, you know, not not horribly black, but, or dark, but, and we'll do the same thing for this. 
I'll do all the edges. Oops. Especially because you have to print this paper, you'll have a white edge right there. So go ahead and um, distress that as much as you can. And in some areas, give it a little go. Alright, I think that's good enough for now. So I guess you guessed it, but this is going to go here. And I apologize, but this project is so humongous that it's kind of hard to capture the whole thing on video. But I'll give you a little a little peek of what you know it's going to be uh, looking like. So and we're going to be covering this, okay? We're not leaving it like that. But it is from here that we're going to be putting our, our roof or uh, the tent, you know, that we're going to create. So let me get most, let me get my uh, chipboard hole cut out that's going to be on top. And then we'll keep on working. And I'll see you in a little bit. All right, my friends, we'll continue with the making of our, um, oops, sorry. I'm dropping something as I go. My uh, vintage car carousel a nightlight uh, lamp. And last time we have finished our base for it. And then we created what is going to be our center for the lamp. And we still have to cover this, but we're not, we're not quite there yet. So the following thing is, this is what you're going to do. And I'll give you measurements right now. We're going to create the lamp shade right here. And this is not completely done, but I'll give you the measurements. The measurements are quite, quite simple. And you're going to be printing, I'll tell you how many, two, four, six, eight, ten. So you're going to print about six or seven of, a, of any of your, you know, um, pages for Ephemeras Vintage Garden, which is the, car the Garden uh, Carnival. So you're going to print, I think it's six. I, I didn't count all of them, but I know you get two per page. Then you're going to clean the edges, and I printed mine at 10 and, 10 and 3 quarters by, no, 8 and 3 quarters by 11, 11 and a quarter, I think. I went customs on my button, on my printing preferences. I went custom, and then I made, I ex expanded the picture as much as I could on my, um, you know, on my printing paper, and I printed on cardstock, obviously, <clears throat> just white cardstock. Once you have them uh, printed out, I clean the edges for, and you're going to have very little edges left over in your um, cardstock, but just clean them out. Then you're going to cut them on the long side, which is the 11 um, inches side. You're going to cut them at 3 by 11, 3 by 11. You're going to get two per page and you're going to have um, a leftover of I think is maybe two and two and a quarter something like that. You're going to put that aside because you're going to need it. So once you cut them and let me let me get one and cut it in front of you. Give me just one second. Okay so here is the page um, if you're printing at, at printing at um, eight and three quarters by eleven and a quarter, I think it is. Anyways, try to expand your picture as much so you can get the usage of the whole page as possible. So you have very little left to clean up. Um, so I'm going to do that on all four sizes. Oops, not that it matters a lot in other areas, but. I'm just going to clean it up because I don't want to see any of those white edges anywhere. Okay, so now I got my paper. So you need to just print six or seven of these papers to give you enough to create your the top of the lampshade, okay? Once you have it this way, you're going to cut it long side here, which is your 11 inch side. Now it's like 10 and a half by now because we cut it a little bit. And you're going to cut them at three. Three inches wide by whatever it gives you there. Whatever it is, which is I think is 10 and a half, although we're going to trim it. Okay, so you're going to get two, two of this cones okay so we're gonna end up cutting them in corners but before we do that this have to be trimmed to nine so three by nine 
they're going to look like this. Once they're like that, let me get my marker. You're going to make a mark. Just fold your page. I mean, you this is three inches. So if you fold it, you know you're going to be at eleven at uh, one and a half. I'm just gonna. You're going to be at eleven at uh, one and a half. I'm just gonna make a little mark in there, just because I'm a little lazy and you know I can get away with it <laughs> basically. Um, all right. So give or take, there it is. I'll make another little mark. All right. So now comes the nitty gritty. Not difficult at all. So you're going to cut from that place that little um, area here the little mark that you did you're gonna get to this corner oops let me see it's out of focus so you're gonna make a cut from here to here and let me draw one so you guys can see it without um, let me see if I can uh, where's my oh there's my ruler I need my Tim Holtz ruler all right so let me mark it from there to here right there oops that did not mark did it okay so right there and now same thing over here so make sure you got both corners and that's good all right so this is basically what you're going to do you're going to cut out that's why I just do that little that little um, uh, you know mark in there and then I bring it to this corner and cut Then I'll turn it over get that corner and this one too a line in my trimmer and voila so this is going you're gonna end up you cannot get two out of one because they're gonna end up being like this you could cut them diagonal right there but there's not the same shape okay you're going to get um, you're going to get in an, it's not going to be a perfect triangle so that's the way you need to have it it's just gonna end up being a long triangle that measures nine by three okay so you're going to cut about six of those pages cut them that way and the other ones just um, <clears throat> leave them for next but when you cut those two remember I mean where's the other one when you cut this ones the two of them from the page you ended up with this piece right here right uh, that leftover well we're going to use that leftover we're going to again trim it to nine and I think this I don't even know what this measures so I just I leave it as a leftover let's see it is two two and a quarter give or take a little less than two and a quarter uh, we're just going to half that exactly half it all right so in this we're going to use let me move my trimmer because that's all I needed to show you there and let me move some of these things I'm gonna this has nothing to do with the measurements give me just a second I need to do this before I forget all right all right this is such a big trimmer that it just takes all the space in the world okay so now you have all your triangles and I've got more in here you know that we can work with so I'm gonna move my triangles back here and I'm gonna get this ones that I've already cut out and all right so this uh, uh, this little pieces right here that you have we're going to be making this these are our hinges and these are the hinges that will be holding all this circular um, you know nightshade or lampshade so once you have it remember we trimmed it at nine uh, let me see this one belongs to that and this one to this one okay so we're gonna add some glue just liquid glue and again this one just takes forever sorry all right so let's put some glue in here I don't have a measurement for this one as long as they're a little bit there about a little bit of like an inch and a quarter you'll, you'll be fine we're trying to utilize our leftovers and this is where your 
um, I guess uh, skewers are going to come in and you're going to cut them in nine this one's is cut in nine already trimmed and then you're going to put it right in the middle of the paper and then you're going to put this other one on top so you're basically creating a hinge and as soon as you put them together I start kind of training the paper to make this little ridge in the middle with a little skewer and then I'm going to turn on the other side and do the same and I'll just choose one side that is going to be showing up there whichever looks better I like this one at this point so I'm you know I work I kind of um, I kind of burnish it just with my fingers and my fingernails to create this little ridge right there as you can see it right there this one is ready to be put on here so I'll show you how it starts let's get some glue this is ready to be utilized it's quite quite simple if you can test you can tell Now I'm going to put this one here. You just start with one and you just keep adding to that one. So it's always going to go on a circular, you know, basis. Right there. And now this one is ready for me to add another one. And what I have done, I alternated the paper so she's got one that is kind of um um, stripes, yellow and red stripes with some distress color over it. So I kind of alternated between colors so it kind of looks like a tarp, you know, like a... So over here I got that one. Now I'm going to use a regular um, design one. And I'm going to try to keep them as, as to the edge, to this ridge right here, as possible. All right. So now I'm ready to cut this out. This little trim right here, just trim it out. And look how it's looking. It's looking really nice and um, uniform inside. And that's how you know that's how you know, you know, that you're you're right there. Alright, so we have another one. And I'll tell you in a minute how many did I use all together because I'm making this video as I'm making my um I mean you've already seen the pictures if you're watching this video. You already seen the pictures of what I've created, but as I'm making it, I don't even have it ready. By the time you're watching it, obviously I'm done, but all right. I just kind of had a, you know, a thought in my head and came through and I said, let's go with it. And you know, when I get in a creative mode, I have to take advantage of those moments and, um, and listen, you know. All right, so I put a regular, oops, let me see, a regular paper here um, because, um, you know, so one that is just no color or no, no, not too much of a design, one that has design, and then another one like this, one that is kind of just distress. All right. And this is creating this circular pattern right here. As you can tell, this is, by the way, it's going to be. So I'm going to cut this other little piece right here and we are ready to make another one and then finally I'll give you the total. All right. I think this is going to be my last one because it's getting quite circular and big. And I could have gone smaller but you know I wanted to be I wanted it to be substantial. So let me measure this skewer right here because I need an extra one. Okay. So I measure it nine and I'm just going to cut it. I have some shears, some gardener, um, gardener shears. And I'm, okay, so that's nine right there. Over that glue. There. And then put the other paper on top. And this creates your hinge and start you know burnishing I burnished both sides first before I know which one I'm going to use and I think I like this one right here I like the ones with a pattern but just do as much as you can to create this little you know that ridge that gives you right there because when the lampshade is up that's going to you know it's going to act like the spine 
and you're going to see it even more in a little bit when we um, when we start distressing all right and we might need another one I don't know we'll see how it goes okay so now it goes okay so now let's put another one I thought of distressing the paper before and then I go nah, I'm too lazy I'll do it later just because I can get away with it again all right one more here and we'll check it to see how um, oops where's my lid for this how wide it is whether we need another one or not I don't know yet I am designing as I'm talking to you which is kind of crazy I realize but you'll have your you'll have your PDF form with all the you know the measurements and cuttings and how many of this and that okay so let's put it again together let's see how this looks and I realize this is really big for it oh you know what I I kind of like that let me see I don't know if it's gonna be big enough or I need to make another one probably one more one more set I think yeah I think so all right well let me uh, I hope I had some more paper I need to go and print some more paper and I'll be right back okay my friends um, let me just move my camera a little bit here um, the project is getting so big <laughs> to actually capture it and the, um, you know on, on camera I'm gonna trim this piece right here and do our closure and I will count how many we used so since we're going to close the circle now I'm gonna put glue on this and close the glue so basically what we're doing is closing this one with the very first one we did and that's the one you're gonna have to kind of hold for a little bit because being in a circle it wants to it's not sitting straight on the table it's not flat on the table so it wants to pull away from the glue and you don't want to let it because that thing needs to dry before it separates so this is what it looks like from the inside so it's kind of you know one overlay um, to the other looks pretty good already so let's make sure this one stays close to where it needs to be I know this pretty lady here was my first one so okay so that's what it looks like up here let's bring this down and I am going to have to bring the cameras down so you guys can appreciate it but it's just really hard to it's really hard to um, to you know capture it from the camera above it just doesn't do it it's too big look at that but I think it's already getting pretty so let me let me tilt it over to see if you guys can see a little bit there it is there's our carousel going on it's already looking really good okay so now let me we're going to I'm gonna get gather my materials to work on our top here and then to cover this area here and start working on our little horses here we're going to be doing a lot of fussy cutting from her own uh, paper the paper line from Ephemera's Vintage Garden which is Garden uh, Carnival and uh, once I have all that done we'll continue to put in them on okay we'll see you in a little bit alright my friends we'll continue the next step is you're going to cut uh, two rosettes out of the Tim Holtz Rosette Maker die and this is uh, it's called Paper Rosette and it's by Tim Holtz and I'll show you the what it looks like it's part of his alterations uh, products and um, once you have them cut you're going to and I cut two out of the same paper so the paper measures eight and a half by eleven I cut two out of one okay and <clears throat> once you have it done I'm sure you have you know done this before <clears throat> but I'll show you anyways it's just for the ones that haven't done it but I think most by everybody once you cut your paper you want to put a little bit of tape over it just you know a little bit of just uh, office tape 
just so it stays stable otherwise it's going to come apart on you that's just the way they do things so then you're going to start to fold it do your folds so basically you're creating an accordion sorry I was out of out of range there let's see so once you create your rosette this way you'll notice that it's much better if you add the tape for the backing they just tend to fall apart these papers when you cut them so now it's like that right now you're going to add a little bit of tape to this end and I'm just going to use my quarter inch tape um, my quarter inch um, or you know score tape can't talk today just fill it up in there and I'm going to and I cut a piece that is bigger than that because I'm going to fold what is left over of the of the glue into it so it's basically it then you turn it around you want to gather that together like this and because you've already pre you already pre uh, folded that all you have to do is flatten it down and it becomes this is so big that it's hard to get anything in camera with it. So once you have it done, see how it just stays right there. So your next step is to put glue in here. Um, this is part of the rosette pattern. It comes with it. So when you cut your paper, you'll cut one of those. And again, flatten it down. Just kind of hold it there for a little bit and then just put your rosette on top or your paper. And just keep gathering that in. Keep and it's easiest to go to the back once you have put the little paper on it much much easier and there's your rosette you're going to need uh, two of them and the first one it's going to be put on on top of this and the way you do this you get your first rosette and you put glue about the same diameter of this and just put it go and just put it on top then I had just a little piece left of this um, I don't I think it's one and a half inch wide and these are the mail this is a, a um, tube container where you mail stuff in this is uh, let me see this is about an inch and three quarters um, tube and it's about two inches not even two inches um, you know long so I put my rosette on top of it right here once I add it add a glue add it to the cone or this the the lampshade then turn it around put some more glue in the middle and then stuck this tube in there and this is just going to give it more strength that's all that's the only thing you're going to be needing that for and the other rosette is to put over here well I don't even know if I'm gonna put it there but I was um, just showing you on that one if uh, in case that we needed it so now because this is kind of you know it's loose in here and I really don't want to glue it in case that I need to do some emergency cares you know it's going to be in the boys room so can you imagine all right so this ugh, let me know. this part right here will fit inside here we're gonna make it fit and that my friends gives the whole and is really sturdy now it's not moving whatsoever let me turn it around it becomes really really steady I'm definitely going to move the camera so you guys can see this around I have to unmount the camera so you guys can appreciate that because it's just difficult you know it's so big this project so let me see if I can turn it aside completely no see it's still too big but let me show you see how it stays in there and it becomes much much sturdier but if I need to do any repairs look what I can do I can just remove it with my hand so it becomes a safety a safety thing and this is why I like this camera on the boys room because um, I don't want to put anything electrical there for them uh, and definitely no candles so let me try to put it back in there so this was the perfect answer for me all right so I'm gonna have to film somewhere else once I start putting all that all the areas now okay so here you have it there is your little lamp 
Now we're going to start with the, with the decoration. So I'm going to do a lot of fussy cutting and then we'll come back with you, okay? We'll see you